Because it's week 13 and we're discussing security, I'd like to make one point about the conditional statements that are being used in the text. Um, it basically reads, if the server request method is equal to post, then enact the code. Well, <clears throat> if we look at our form action, you'll see the method is post. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys something inside our local host here. Um, this is chapter 13. Let me make sure I'm looking in the right direction here. Um, yeah, chapter 13 needs to be inside the HD docs. So when I go back here and I do that, I'll look in chapter 13. I'd like to show you the calculator. Right now we have one, maybe 12.99 and a tax of 2%. So we get this value, which is fine. But let me show you something about what this does. Basically, I could take any form, any form at all, just like this, and I'll just point it to the script in question. So let's say I'm um, a hacker from a, a different server, a different area. And let's say we'll go right to my desktop, and I'll just call this uh, test.html. Okay. And what I'm going to do is point my form action directly to this script. So inside test.html, which is right here, I'm going to open up Sublime, and we're just going to run this form with no HTML toward HTTP colon slash slash localhost and this script. Okay, so because the form is only testing against um, the fact that the method is post, we can send data from anywhere. Okay, so this deducts some of the security. In other words, let's take another good look at this. Um, I'm going to go back to calculator. Uh, let me go back to my applications. And we'll go to MAMP, HTDocs, Chapter 13. This is calculator. I'm going to keep it up. The fact is that this didn't prevent someone from submitting data from even a desktop, even though it's on the local server. So let me show you how we can defend against this. I'm going to echo out a preformat tag, which we've done before. And I'm going to echo out a closing preformat tag because I want you to um, I want you to see all the values that come in via the server. So I'm going to basically print R, which outputs all the values of an array, and session is an array, but we're going to do server. There we go. So now when I do this and I hit refresh, you see this section, okay? I want to point your attention to this HTTP refer. In this case, I did submit the data from that section. Watch, it's from this page. I click calculate and I get the HTTP refer. I also get the request method, which is going to be post. So here's the request method right here. And that's what uh, our book author's using to run conditions. Now watch when I go to um, my desktop again, and I run test.html one more time. Now look at the HTTP refer. So it's going to be refer. Let's see if we can find it here. Notice how there isn't one. So the beauty of this is that we can ensure that the data that we want is coming from the right place. I'm, I'm fine with detecting to see if the server request method is post. That's perfect. That's fine. But let's also check against that server. And I'll do HTTP underscore refer. And this should be equal to the exact link where the data is coming from. In this case, it's localhost, I believe, colon 888, and slash, I'll just copy it. Um, but that, this is why um, we can be more thorough. And I think you'll agree that detecting and testing where the data came from 
is a great increase in security. So if I go here now, and I you know I, I go to my my widgets, I can go ahead and uh, we'll do two whatever whatever and calculate. We I've got my pause button on the screencast here. So when we calculate, it works. But if we do the test.html, which is not part of the HTTP refer, we should get nothing, and we don't get anything. We just get the print R.